I was working so hard to keep it under that 10 minute mark that I didn't even notice we got an error here. So what's this error? We just need to bring in, um, it doesn't recognize what water project context is probably because that's not the name of it. That's called water DB context. That's what I named it. So we're going to say water DB context there instead. And then that one, it still doesn't recognize, but it says, Hey, do you want to bring in the API water project API dot data folder? Do you want to import that into this class? And I say, yes, I do. And then it'll recognize that. Okay. So we've got the different steps done. We, we brought in the database. We put an entry in the app settings.json to make sure that there was a connection string there pointing to the database. We built a model to represent what one record is going to look like. And then we built a DB context file, which says, Hey, by the way, what I want to do ultimately is go out to this projects table in the database. We're going to bring those in the entries to a DB set of type project that looks like this. So each row goes into one of these project classes and we have many instances of these classes, right? So each row comes into one of these and we put those together in a set. And that's what we're going to be accessing later on. When we say underscore context dot projects. In fact, we're going to do that right now um, by loading this up in the controller. And so I'm going to go into our uh, controller. Now it, it built this default controller, but again, that's not going to be super helpful for us. That's a weather forecast. We're not doing weather forecasts in this case. So I'm going to build a new controller. And I want to make sure that the type I choose is API, which by the way, you could just do an empty controller and type in the information. This just gives us a little bit of stuff in it. And so I'll call this my water controller. All right. So water controller, it's an API controller empty. I add that and it gives me the little basic setup that I could just type in. This is just a text file. So I could just type this stuff in if I <laughs> couldn't find that exact template. All right, so let's again take a look at this and just remember what's going on here. So we see that uh, it's got a couple of imports. The namespace for the overall project is water project API. This folder's controllers. It has a water controller class that inherits from a controller base, which is a general controller. So it has all the functionality of a general controller. And then it's got these two attributes on it. One is a route. This is API slash and then in brackets controller. And you'll recall that this is our path. And then I just indicate that this is an API controller. All right. So let's build an instance of that context file. So I do that by coming in and saying, uh, similar to what we've done in the past, public water controller. Uh, this is the, so this is the constructor. This is the sp special method that's run when the the controller is built the first time which is when the program starts so that's the benefit here we're getting this happens as soon as the program begins these controllers get built and so we're going to get a, an instance of the database from the beginning that we can work with and so we build this constructor and we say hey when you're when you're building this uh, controller i need you to create an instance of our water db context that I'm just going to refer to as temp for a minute. And so that's going to go in and take the entry that we put in the program CS file and load up when we call this water db context. Um, it's going to create an instance of a db context. We're going to pass in the option that has this connection string to our water db context. So when it's set up, it's going to use SQLite at that path in order to build what I refer to as an instance of the database in C sharp that we can use. So now I go back to my water controller. This is getting loaded up, but our problem is we're going to have other methods down here, public, some other, uh, public void, some other, some method. This method can't see what happened in this method. This method scope is between there and there. This method scope is between here and here. And so I can't see temp. If I try to refer to temp here, it doesn't know what I'm talking about. So I have to change the level of visibility for this particular 
uh, variable. So I come in, I say, uh, uh, this one can be private, private, and uh, I want an instance of a water DB context that I'll refer to as whatever I want. Now we've just done context or whatever. We can say uh, water context and then that's that. But then in our constructor, we can say, hey, when you receive this water context, go set it equal to the water context that's visibility is here. And now that I've done that, if I want to type in down here water context, it knows exactly what it is because it can see it. They're in the same level of visibility. This variable is for the whole class. And as long as the controller is around, which is the, the life of the program, then this database is going to be alive and we can do something with it. All right. The other thing I was going to show you just really quick is, you know, a lot of times we worry about this Lambda function that we end up losing, using quite a bit. If I wanted to, I could do this with a Lambda statement, just saying Lambda. Take that statement and put it up here instead and then not have any braces. So it's just an inline statement. One thing I say, the result of this method is going to be setting that or returning that or whatever. Um, if we were returning something, uh, this is the exact same thing as this. Those two things do the exact same thing. Um, whether I have that Lambda there or not. And so for this one, I'm actually going to leave it that way uh, just to show you a different way of doing it that we can uh, set water context equal to temp there. And the program will still just work fine without these braces. Right, so that's the lambda function. We're saying the, the result of this uh, function, this uh, method, is uh, we're going to receive this stuff and the result is this. So a lot of times, instead of saying return, whatever, if it's a return statement, we don't type that in. We just say the result is and then it gets automatically returned. And so I just wanted to hit up the, the lambda function. Okay, let's make this do something quick because we're running out of time here. So I'm going to say public... Um, Let's do, uh, so public, this is going to return an I enumerable, which again is just a set of data like a list or whatever that's easy to enumerate through, of type project, and I'll just follow the defaults, get project. And it even built it for me. This is helping me try to stay in under my time. It says uh, there's a method called get projects, and what we're going to return out of this method is going to the database, going to the projects table, getting all the entries and putting them to a list. All right, so let's run this. I'll just do a .NET run down here at the bottom, .NET run. It builds and then it runs. And now if I pull up a website, so if I come here, I don't know if it's the same number. It was, okay, I shouldn't have closed it. Oh, I did a control C. See, I'll do this all dang semester long. Don't do control C. I highlight this, I won't need to soon because we're gonna use a real uh, set IP address or a URL, I guess is a better way of saying that. So local host, now how do I get to this? I, I could do the weather forecast just fine and we get that data. How do I get the data out of this one? Well, the route is API and then whatever the name of the controller is. Well, let me try slash API slash uh, whatever the name of the controller is, water controller. Oh, nothing there. That's because in the .NET way, it doesn't want you to type in the word controller. It knows it's a controller. Just give me the name of the controller. So I come back in here and I say API slash water instead. Whoops. Water instead. And we still didn't get are we running. We are running. So API controller, what did I miss? API water, oh, weather forecast, haha. -ha. Okay, let's delete that. So it should be whatever the path is, slash API slash the name of the controller. Again, I'll just demonstrate real quick. If I have the word controller in there, it's not gonna find it. But if I take the word controller off and run it again, it still doesn't find it. Okay cliffhanger. I don't even know what's going to happen. We'll find out in the next video. Spencer out.